Hello and welcome to a new video about the electric field. Today we're talking about a use case of the electric field. Today we're talking about a capacitor. I'm going to explain how this is working. I have drawn here a typical example, maybe this should be coaxial here, but a typical application of a capacitor. So we have two plates, usually, which are separated. So they are not connected. The charges cannot flow from here to here. There is a, a gap in between. So we have a gap. We have a distance between the two plates. Yeah, A distance D. Distance between. And we have an area of the plates A. All right. This is a typical Typical uh, drawing, yeah, because it's easy then to understand how this is working. And now I'm using the symbol. The symbol also looks like that, yeah. So we have two plates. That's the symbol of a capacitor. Yeah? And now let's think about what is happening if I am adding. this capacitor to a voltage source. So here we have U0, the voltage source, and here we have UC. And here we have the current IC rushing in, which is going out here. In first, at the first this capacitor doesn't know it will, it will get connected to a voltage source. So, so at the beginning, this is zero volts. Okay. And here is a, here is a voltage. Yeah. So this voltage will force a current to run. And in, in first, it appears like there is a short circuit. Yeah. So this is maximum maximum voltage yeah if it would look like that it there's even no limit yeah usually we have little resistors somewhere so it will be it will be maxed simply we will talk about this later yeah when we talk about charging and decharging yeah so this is the initial this is the initial situation yeah? we are connecting a capacitor which is not charged, which is voltage zero, yeah, to a, to a voltage source. And there is a current running. And this current, what is this current doing? This current is now in our imagination, even if we know we cannot move positive uh, charges, is accumulating positive charges here on this plate. Here it is running in, so here positive charges will build up. And because the positive charges on this side will does not like the max and the main the positive charge new positive charges on this side, they will move away, and the, those which move away, yeah, so there will flow the same amount of positive charges away which appear here. Yeah? So this IC and the C is constant. So here and here, it's the same IC. And this plate will have charges now. So if we have here positive charges and here leaving positive charges, leaving only the negative charges here, yeah, what we do we have? We have here between the two plates, we have an electric field building up. And this electric field, because there's electric field, there's a distance, will cause a voltage. Okay? So second situation, the circuit is still the same. So we have here our capacitor we have here our voltage source here we have a UC which is smaller than U0 here we have our U0 this is smaller than U0 there is still a current I see going 
into the capacitor. This is the second situation. Okay, this is the second situation. However, yeah, since there is already a little charge, yeah, it is harder for us for us to push in new charges. Yeah? Because you know this, this, this those positive charges with which accumulated on the upper plate, they are already it's like a, a jam, a traffic jam, yeah. They are already jamming the upcoming charges, so I see will be smaller than maximum. It is smaller than maximum. Okay. This means this charge will this charging of the capacitor will lower. Okay? When does it come to an end? When does it come to an end? Between here and here no current will flow if between here and here we have the same potential. So in the end it is going to look like that. That we have here the capacitor. We have here our voltage source. We have here our U0. We have here our UC which is equaling our U0 and this means IC is 0 amps. Yeah? So now our, our capacitor is fully charged, so that's the third step now. Yeah? Now our capacitor is fully charged and there will not, no, nothing will change. Yeah? What means fully charged? Well, let's have a look at this. Yeah? Let, well, let's draw here our, our capacitor once again from the side view. So here we have one plate. Here we have the other plate. Here we have the two connectors. Here we have our IC going in. Here we have our IC going out. Yeah, that's exactly this from the side view. So actually what is building up here is here we are building up plus, plus Q and here is building up minus Q yeah, because the positive charges are leaving. Here we have a distance in between. And here we have an area. And now let's think about the electric field. The electric field will go from positive to negative plate. And when we talked about field display, we said between two parallel plates, these are now surface charges, there will be a homogeneous field. And this is how this looks like. Yeah. Of course, here at the side we have small disturbances, so we will go out here, something like that. Yeah. So here we have disturbances at the edge, but they're usually very small and we will neglect them. Right? We will neglect them. So let's say we have here, in between those two plates, we have here a part of the area which is exactly the size of A. Okay, so we're exactly ending here, it has the size of A. And here on the other side, I will close the hull now, closed surface around. We have another area which I call A dash. Right. And now we, we're talking about uh, the Satz from Elektrischen Hüllenfluss, Gauss Law <laughs> in English, Gauss Law, yeah, that our, our flow out of the hull, uh, our flux, is the flux going out here plus the flux C dash, which is going out at A dash, right? So actually, this is 
the flux density multiplied by the area A. And now we have plus the flux density D dash yeah, multiplied by the area A dash. All right. And this here. This is very small. I'm going to ignore this. Okay. And what is this? This is the content, the, the, the content of the charge. Yeah? And this is actually Q. This is the contained contain charge. Yeah? So actually what we've written here is that Q equals D multiplied by A. Alright. Now with we have not specified any material in between, right? So we know that D equals E multiplied by some epsilon. If this epsilon, if this air or, or vacuum, then it's epsilon zero. If this is another material in between, then we would have this relative uh, um, constant epsilon r to consider. So I just write epsilon. Yeah? This means if I put this in here now, yeah, then my Q equals E multiplied by epsilon multiplied by A. One. And now I said, here we have a voltage. Yeah? Here we have a voltage, UC, of course. Yeah? If we have electric field, we have a voltage. How much is UC? UC equals the electric field multiplied by the distance. Okay? Multiplied by the distance. Now, I am expressing here E because I want to put it, put it in here. This means E equals UC divided by now I will enter this here. So we have here Q equals UC divided by D multiplied by epsilon multiplied by A. Yeah? Or if I write it a little bit different, then we have here UC multiplied by epsilon a divided by D. And here we see, we don't see any current, we don't see nothing. This is constant. Constant. Yeah. The formula is Q equals UC multiplied by C with C equals epsilon A divided by D. And this is called capacitance. This is the capacitance of the capacitor. <laughs> All right? This is the capacitance of the capacitor. And you see, there is a relationship between the, the charge, the charge, which is charged in the, in the capacitor and the voltage. So the voltage of the capacitor and this is the capacity. This means the bigger the capacity is, the less voltage I have for the same charge. This capacitance, this indicates how much charges I can put in. Yeah, to reach a certain voltage. 
capacitance. This is a good name, actually. Capacity, capacitance, capacity. Yeah. So this is constant. And this is, everything has a capacitance. Everything. Yeah. Here we talked about the two plates. This is typical. Yeah. However, if we just have two wires next to each other, yeah, not touching each other next to each other, then there is also a capacitance in between them. Yeah. Much lower capacitance because we can always think about this would look like two plates which are fairly small and have more distance and so on. So what what is what is a, a high capacity? High capacity means the area is very big. Yeah? Then capacitance is high. The distance is very small. Then capacity is high. Epsilon is very big. Yeah? Then capacitance is high. So the ideal condensator would be very close to each other. Very, very close to each other. This D is very small. And the area is huge. Huge area. Then I have a high capacity. Capacitance. All right? And in wires, it's the same. But then the Capacitance is low because the area is not that big and the distance is a little bit further, but there is still capacitance. That, but, but but what is then a capacitor yeah, if everything has capacitance? <laughs> what is a capacitor? A capacitor is an element which primary quality is the capacitance. The primary meaning of it is storing electric charges. Storing electric charges. I am not sure if somebody noticed, but here, this, what I've drawn in here, this brown, this is a junction. This is a junction according to Kirchhoff's law. Yeah? And we said in Kirchhoff's law, hey, hello, yeah? everything which is going inside must come out somewhere. There's going something inside, there's nothing coming out. What is it? I thought it's a law. Yes, it is a law. <laughs> and if we would place the node, the junction over here, it still fits. Yeah, What is going in is coming out. Still fits. But who says I'm not allowed to, to separate those two plates? I mean, they are not connected. Why? <laughs> Nobody says that. Why? Nobody. Yeah. But this is because when we talked about Kirchhoff's law, we did not anticipate that there might be application where a considerable, considerable amount of charges are stored inside this closed hull, this closed surface. Now we have this situation. And now we have to extend the, the junction law yeah, of Kirchhoff that this is only valid in cases where there is nothing stored inside. Yeah? This is we consider or the, the electric charges, yeah, charged particles, cannot be destroyed or generated. They can only be moved. So if charges are accumulating somewhere, yeah, then a current is allowed to go in or out if they are dropping the charges. Yeah? This is an extension to the to uh, the, the Kirchhoff's law. We will have this somehow this difficulty. We will have this difficulty sorted out when we're talking about the Ampere Maxwell's law. Yeah? Then we will see it's all the same. Yeah? It's all the same. Does not really matter. We are just have to also to consider the change of the electric field as well. But we will talk about this later. Just that you know, okay, there is an explanation. And if there is a considerable amount of charges can be stored inside a junction, select a junction, then we have to extend the, the Kirchhoff's law a little bit. Capacitor. Right. In the next videos, we're talking about, uh, you know, energy. Yeah? Because there is, there is current going in, there is voltage, so there must be, there must be power, right? 
and power multiplied by time is, is energy. So there must be energy somewhere. Huh? And this energy is stored in the electric field. And how we can calculate this, we will see in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.